she was just a young girl who was so vibrant and happy to be married. He slammed my head against the wall very hard and I fell down. Actually, I didn't even feel the pain because it was like something... Sure. Yes. And I started bleeding on the floor. Not knowing what was coming, it was more heavier than what she expected. I started having so much problem, headaches, nerve pain. When I go to the hospital, they tell me it's a, it's a bell's pulse because my mother was going to this side. This is Jane's story. Thanks so much, Jane, for creating time for us. I so much appreciate. So kindly introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Jaya. Yeah, I'm really honored to be here today. And I know after this, someone out there will be encouraged by my story, from my story. And uh, I truly appreciate. Yes, I'm Jane Nganga. Mm -hmm. My Facebook name is Jasmine Nganga. Mm -hmm. So, so many people know me as Jasmine. Jasmine Nganga is a mother of two. Mm -hmm. I have a son who is 23 years old, Baraka, mm -hmm. and a daughter who is 17, going to 18 in January. January 14th is that's when she will be turning 18 years. Oh. So soon I'll be... Very soon will be celebrating a birthday. A birthday, yeah. yes. Huh? I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a widow. Yeah, I lost my, my husband uh, six years ago. Mm -hmm. That was in 2016. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jen Nganga was born in Anyuki. Mothery Hospital, but my parents were living in Nanyuki. And uh, two years after they gave birth to me, they separated. My mom dropped, uh, took us to Shags in Gilgil. That's where my grandmother and my grandparents used to live. So, and she left to town. She left us there. We were five of us. I was the last born. And then my father remarried. I didn't get to know him by then. Mm -hmm. So, uh, being raised by my grandmother, who was mentally retarded somehow, it wasn't easy because she didn't mm -hmm. care. No one cared about our education or anything. Yeah, we were there to survive on our own. Class 7, that's when my mom came home. Uh, when she came home, it wasn't easy because she came a different person than the one we expected, we expected. to see. Mm -hmm. We thought that we'll see a, a loving mother, mm -hmm. someone who is sober and all that. But remember when she went to town, she started, work, she started working as a barmaid. So uh, when she came home, she wanted to keep the standard. Yeah. So the only way out was to start sh uh, selling uh, changa mm -hmm. because there's no other way she could survive. Mm -hmm. And uh, she came pregnant. She gave birth to another boy who is now behind me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't cope up with that life because I never saw a family set up. Remember my grandmother was, and my grandfather used to have three wives. So we didn't see a, a, a well set up of a family. Mm -hmm. And so we decided, I decided to run away from home because uh, my mom didn't care. Sometimes she could be very drunk and the customers are here, no one to sell Changa for them. So me and my sister, we are the one who are doing it. And we are the one who are going to buy. It was very far away. To like, buy the Changa To now. buy the Changa, yeah. Mm -hmm. We are the one to, be, to buy the Changa, to come and sell to these people. Mm -hmm. And then she asked us, because our teachers were coming home, because there were no many places that they used to sell Changa. Mm -hmm. So our teachers were also drunk, and so they used to come home. And tomorrow you'll be the same in the same class same with the student, yeah. with your teacher. Yeah. So I think my mom realized that this is not good, and then also she so she told us to drop. I was forced to drop from school. That is in class seven. That is in class seven. Mm -hmm. So and now she gave birth together with my sister. Our second-born sister also gave birth the same time. They gave birth the same time. Mm -hmm. So 1993, I decided now this life is too much. I remember I was a prefect. So when you meet with other students, they are like, oh, you, you used to brag. You know, of course, they will talk. Mm -hmm. And now you are at home. You can't even afford to, to go, go to, to school. school. I decided mm -hmm. to run away from home. I went to a nearby uh, town. That is Gilgil town. Mm -hmm. uh, these are, and I started looking for a job. But what kind of a job? Of course, house girl. girl. I met this very nice lady. She was called, she was one boy. Today, she's a deceased. May her soul rest in peace. Mm -hmm. One boy was another angel to me because that's the last house that I worked as a house girl. I shared the, all the experiences that I've been through. And that lady told me, you know what? From today, consider me as your big sister. 
and nothing again will have ever happen to you so long as I'm alive. We became like sisters. She told me, now what can you do? Because you don't have even a class A certificate. Mm -hmm. Though she took me to address uh, making calls. She paid for me. So I used wow. to take the boy to school in the morning and then I go for my course. Mm -hmm. Then in the evening I go pick the boy, we go home together. She was a very nice lady. So after I completed my course, she, she looked for a job in Australia. Mm -hmm. I got a job there. We used to do uh, mass production, the, the piece work. Mm -hmm. eh? So we were paid on commission. So I worked there. That's how I, that's, uh, that was my, my, my last home to work as a house girl. So I started working now as a dressmaker. I worked there for, for like six months. Then I, meet the, I met this guy. I got my firstborn child. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were age mates, I think around 18, so we couldn't even. It did, okay, it wasn't nothing. There was Both nothing. Of you at were all. still yes. kids, yes. in short. <laughs> so I got pregnant, and that was it. But I decided I'm not going to abort my child. I don't know even how it's, it's done. Mm -hmm. But I was so determined to have my child and show him love because I've never experienced love, love mm -hmm. before. So I worked there, I started now having pregnancy issues. I dropped, I started selling clothes around uh, Rungalunga area and mm -hmm. all that because we used to live in Rungalunga. Mm -hmm. I gave birth to my son. Then I started looking for another job. This time, there was a nearby com there was a company nearby, uh, nice and lovely. Mm -hmm. I went there. They used to pick girls for promotion, merchandising. I, I I asked them if they can give me a job. They told they asked me what can you do. The only job we have is you can become a merchandiser or a promoter. A promoter. And I said then he can do. So I was given a merchandising job. So I started working there. After that, uh, that's where I got connections. I started now doing this. I gave my, my life to Christ mm -hmm. during that time. And uh, now I shifted from Lunga Lunga, I went to Rongai, then from Rongai, I went to Kahawa West. Kahawa West, that's where I get, I got to meet this guy, now the father of my daughter. Mm -hmm. Because I was saved, so I went to Deliverance Church. That's where I got this guy. He had lost, he had just lost the wife. So he was older. The, the age gap was around 16 years. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we, we, we kind of connected. There's a boy I used to take care of. I used to go and preach in Kibera also because I had this passion to preach, but I didn't know. I didn't know. I had a, a very strong zeal, but without knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I decided I, I was taking care of that boy, but I didn't have a place to keep him because I had my son and I, it was even hard to pay my rent. So I decided this boy he will stay with the dad, but the dad died later. After now I connected with Julius, that's when the, the father died. Uh, we didn't take much time. We got married. Uh, after we got married, we, 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 we brought him in, the boy. Mm -hmm. And because of this zeal, the burning passion that I had to preach, mm -hmm. I asked him if he can pay, if he can support me. I go to a Bible school somewhere because I was still very mature spiritually. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, yeah, it's okay. And I asked him if he can stay with the kids. But a month after we got married, not even a month, less than a month, that's when I saw the red flags mm -hmm. of which I ignored. And I regret today that I ignored. His that brother. Is a, month, a month after marriage. Yes. His brother his elder brother commented something because he has brought in two a, a, a lady with two kids mm -hmm. now my my foster son and my son mm -hmm. and he said you you are like i think you are barren you can't give birth, birth. because the other lady uh, she also died and uh, she came up she came with a kid also and the, the guy got furious and he beat him up very badly and i was like oh he will kill him no your husband beat his brother his brother yes mm -hmm. so i was like oh my god i i hope one day he won't beat me up because i was very very scared uh but it happened now immediately after that he started beating this boy my mm -hmm. foster son mm -hmm. and my son also and then he beat them up 
and I was like, hey, this is not good at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but I ignored the red flags. May God forgive me because I ignored also. Mm -hmm. But he had already promised to support me in my, during Bible school. I had already gotten a school. Now I was planning to go. And he's like, uh, I, I told him, I'll, I'll take this, son, this boy back to his people because the sister was still alive. And my son will go to my sister's home until I complete my studies. He said, now you want to divorce me. You want to leave me. I will stay with these kids. And because I was very naive, I was like, okay, then he's a loving man. Mm -hmm. I want to take care of my children while I'm not there. Let me stay here. Let me stay here. Mm -hmm. So I left, I went to Bible school, and uh, that is the worst mistake that I ever did. Because what he did, um, he was molesting these kids sexually. Both mm -hmm. of them, I guess. What I confirmed is my son, but later, actually mm -hmm. last year, that's when I realized that my son was sodomized at that time. But now I come to realize maybe he was also doing it with the other, with the other boy. Mm -hmm. So when I came back, I didn't take time. I got pregnant when I, while I was still in school. He came to visit one time and I got pregnant. So by the time I was graduating, I you gave birth. To, I, I, I graduated in November, then January I gave birth to my daughter. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have time even to interact with to these. connect to your kids yes. and understand the environment. And understand what has happened. Mm -hmm. But when I came back, I realized that my son has really, with, he had withdrawn completely. Jesus. And I asked him, when I want to wash him, he's like, no, mom, I'm, I'm able well, to do, do it. On it. My own. Yes, my dad taught me how to do it. So you don't need to worry. So I used to check on, you know, neck and your So mm -hmm. I used to check. I'm like, oh, by the And you know, it's an achievement for a parent yeah, to feel good that your son is yeah, now responsible at that age. The guy had already taken you to a college, so it yes, was a plus. Yes. Mm -hmm. But two months after, after I gave birth, that's when he started now changing completely, as in. Now he's a totally different man. Mm -hmm. Because he connected with a lady that they used to be friend, his ex. And she lives in the UK. So he had, she had already, uh, they, they had already connected while I was still in Bible school. That was the worst time of my life. Because this lady used to call me and abuse me. She told me they had done a blood covenant. And he was really, she was really shocked that we got married because they agreed that he will never get never married. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, she was telling me I forgave him the first time he married the lady that died, but even you, you are not going to stay. And that's where now this guy changed. I don't know what she did to him. And you never clicked something. I never clicked. You know the problem. I, okay, I don't blame myself that much yeah, because yeah, for silly, one, naive, I was silly, very young. young very naive mm -hmm. i've never been in a family setup Definitely, yeah i don't know how it happens in a marriage i thought this is the lifestyle mm -hmm. so the guy started now beating me like every day he used to abuse me he used to tell me you're not my type you're not my type even so and so i won't mention the name mm -hmm. tells me every day how can i marry a child a kid you're not my type pack your things and go but leave my daughter so when i when I think of leaving my daughter behind, I'm like, no, let me die here because I can't leave my daughter behind. I love my kids so much and I wish they can know that. I love them so much, but I affect them much than I wish I could have left. But now again, leaving my daughter behind was even more yeah. dangerous. So that's what happened. And um, one day in 2006, we had uh, this lady's husband had died. And he was like a spiritual no, mentor. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he was like a spiritual mentor to this guy mm -hmm. before they parted ways with the wife. And uh, we, 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 we had gone for Maumbolezi. And you know, Kitambo, they used to do it up to 2 a.m., mm -hmm. 3 a.m., or even uh, throughout the night. So we left. This lady had bought him a car. And um, so the, the car had broken down. And he said, we are going to stay here until morning as we wait for the mechanics. It was around 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. And I told him, this place is very dangerous. Eastlands, you know the pl that place at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he night. said, no. And I told him, my daughter needs me because she was, she was 11 months. She was very young. And he refused. He said, we cannot go to the baby to Maumbolezi because we, are, we, we were doing it somewhere outside. And he said, now that cold is too much for her. So, and I told him, you know what, our lives are much better than, are, are more precious than 
this vehicle. Yeah. So for his interpretation was different because he was like, you are jealous because this car I was bought mm -hmm. by. The, the, the other yes. lady. So, okay, but, and we had another guy with us, his mm -hmm. friend. And he also, he, he also backed up my, my, my suggestion. Said, tutakuacha hapa, jeni butu wende. So that what messed up completely. So he said, okay, let's leave the, we, we, there was a petrol station nearby. We left the car there and took, uh, we took our cab and we went home. But that day, as we were walking upstairs, I was like, he was breathing fire. He was breathing fire. When we got home, I went to the kitchen direct because I was like, this guy will beat me up mm -hmm. today. And that's what he did. So he went to sitting room, akachukua remote, and then that remote, akaitupa kwa dirisha. Sasa alikuwa na nirushia. So, but I had something and I was like, what is up? When I was trying to check what is happening, he was already in the kitchen. That's when he held my head and slammed, he slammed my head against the wall very hard. And I fell down. Mm -hmm. And I was, and actually I didn't even feel the pain because it was like something. Sure. Yes. And I started bleeding on the floor. So I had other boys that I was taking care of. They came, they picked me up. They asked him not to beat me up. They dragged me to the bathroom, mm -hmm. but the blood was still flowing. flowing. And so my son, he was, uh, he was around five, five, six years. Mm -hmm. He was standing there. He knew mom is dead because oh, I was shame. unconscious. As they were dragging me, I was unconscious. I couldn't, I wasn't moving at all. So um, after around, I think 30 minutes, I can't remember exactly the time, I got my conscience back and I woke up. I found my son standing at the door. He thought mom is dead. Mom is not there. So mom is traumatic. gone. Ha, I wish I knew what I was taking through. My, my, my son was going through. So I picked him up. I hugged him. I took him back to bed. And I told him mom can't die. But that was an eye opener. From that point, I started thinking, although I was not sharing with people, maybe they could have ad advised me. Advised you. Me. So, but that night I didn't sleep. At the few hours that were remaining, I was like, this guy will, like, and he used to say it. And when you, when you, you, when you woke up, your husband was just comfortably sleeping. He yes. didn't even react or do anything. No, no, no. By the time I was going to bed, he was already asleep. It's like he was under influence of something. Mm -hmm. I think he wasn't normal. So I went, I picked my girl. I changed her, the diaper, of course. And I, I sat there. I was like, now what do I do? Because I've not been sharing for all this time. I've never mm -hmm. shared with anybody about what I'm going through, apart from my spiritual father. And he used to tell me, no, that is not a marriage. And I was like, ah, you're a man of God and you're telling me, you see, ile upuzi ya kiroho. Yeah. <laughs> Let me call it like yeah. that. So, and, uh, but eventually I forgot because the following day I was taken to the hospital another lady came and picked me and took me to the hospital because I was bleeding I had headache mm -hmm. few months after that's when I started having a twitch on my eyelid uh, after a few months then it started twitching on from my cheek but it was not noticeable so again Jen let me cut you short mm -hmm. all this time all the abuse abusiveness mm -hmm. all everything all the dramas uh, by that time you had not sensed that your husband was abusing your children. He used to show my kids that I'm very bad. They used to hate me. So I was like hungering them to love them back so mm -hmm. that they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he used to tell them that I'm a very bad person. I'm evil. Your mother is an evil person. And, and you know, kids, when you tell them at that age, that's yeah, what they believe. Yeah, that's true. what they believe. So after that, uh, I started twitching. I had I started having so much problem, headaches, nerve pain. When I go to the hospital, they tell me it's a it's a Bell's palsy because my mouth was moving on this was going to this side. No, Jen. Um, mm. How did you come to learn that your husband was abusing your children? And also at the same time, I'd like you to explain to especially people in marriage. You know, mm -hmm. um, most of them uh, couples they tend to ignore the alarms in relationship. Whereby an akupiga you ignore, you get uh, abused, you ignore. So but by the time you'll, you 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 think of pulling out, you've already uh, affected affected your children. The effect is on you and your both on you and the children. the children. So how did you come to learn that your kid was being being abused? When my son uh, cleared his form four, mm -hmm. he got into drugs. He started um, doing all manners of things. I didn't know, actually that time I didn't know about depression. 
I didn't know we are all in, we are all depressed. Mm -hmm. So, and we used to, I used to ask him, why are you doing this? Why are you ashaming me? I'm a pastor. I had even to drop from church and I started, I'm not going to preach anymore mm -hmm. so that I can first put my house in order. Mm -hmm. So that's when I, I didn't know it is because of what happened. That's why that he's into depression. Him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because when he got to treat to teenage, that's when he started now reflecting what happened to him. Before then, he, he, he was okay. But he was also, he was piling some... Pain the effects, yeah. yeah, they were piling, piling, and now when he got to teenagehood, that's when now it they exploded yes, out. It exploded. Hmm. So, and then my daughter, when she joined Form 1, um, she changed completely. Then she started cutting. Herself? Yes. And I was like, what is happening? So when Corona came, mm -hmm. uh, I went and picked her up, and uh, okay, I was trying. I was trying to bring her clothes so that I can understand what is happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when she, shared, she told me. She told me, you know what? I've tried to kill myself this three times. You see what I've done to myself? And I was like, what? Wow. I felt like now the world has come to an end. Is this my daughter? These things that we see on movies. Yeah. Now this is my daughter. I hugged her and I cried. We cried so much. And I called my son. My son was now working. Uh, in Kao, him, him he had already recovered. Eh? Okay. We started a journey with another counselor called Mary, and uh, she really helped my son. Mm -hmm. So him he came out of it, and we started. He told me now I'm not going back to school, but I can do a business. Mm -hmm. He's an artist. He started doing his art jobs. Mm -hmm. So I called him and I told him, uh, come and see what your daughter, your, your sister, has done to herself. When when my daughter got admitted, she he came that evening, and he asked me, tell me what is wrong with our with my sister. There must be something. Why is she cutting herself? And with all this money and uh, people were talking to her. And then she, I told him, let's eat first and then I'll tell you. He told me, mom, no, I can't eat. If you know the reason why, just tell me right now before we eat. Mm -hmm. And I decided to share. We were at the dining table. Napalikuwa napakia serviettes. My son cried. Alikuwa anachukua serviettes, anajipanguza. Anajipanguza, anajipanguza, mpaka ikaisha. We didn't, now both of us we are crying. No one is there to console the other. So after that when he, he told me, I thought that okay, evil okay. man okay. did what, whatever he did to me, he did it because I'm not his son. Okay. Why can, how can he do that to his own daughter? And I told him, not again. What happened to you? And he told me, he sodomized me when you were in Bible school. Ah, that's when I felt like, okay, now God, this is too much. This is too way much. I can't take this. Have you ever felt like, dunia ipasuke tu ikumeze, uende tu? That's what I felt. My daughter is in the hospital. My son has broken another news. And he told me, mom, I've been sick all through. I've been sick. Yes, I have to use the reluctant. That's why I talk about nyumba mapema because... Lazima nunu yo dawa, kienda cho, atumie. atumie. And I told him, can we go to the hospital tomorrow? He told me yes. Then, dio sisi how? We went to see another doctor. Now, Jen, being that you are now about to wrap up, actually we are wrapping yes. up the interview mm -hmm. because of the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would like, first of all, I would like you to, to give uh, an advice to parents, you mm -hmm. know, Mm -hmm. If you're a parent, definitely mm -hmm. you'll do anything to protect your yes, children. Yes, yes, yes. So I want you to give advice to parents, especially those who are just sing alarms and they ignore. Mm -hmm. What can you tell them? Mm -hmm. And then to those parents who've already uh, in that situation, yes. what can you tell them? Never be afraid to be called a single mother because that was another issue. Number two, I was a public figure. Church, I want to speak to people to so-called Christians, because I want, I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. The judgmental in the house of God is too huge. No one will understand a pastor who had just left her marriage, yeah, or his yeah, marriage, true. because it is, it is way too way traffic. Even, mm -hmm. even men, they go through a lot, and especially even the, those pastors. Eh? That quote of a, a role model. A role model, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And uh, number three is because this guy was threatening me. 
and I've come to realize there's nothing a human being can do to you if you stand on your ground. So what I want to advise parents, please, if you see a red flag, marriage will not take us. Okay, I'm not advocating for divorce, but marriage will not take us to heaven. No, 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 no. Living in a, an abusive marriage is not godly. It is not at all. And that woman who is fighting out there, that man who is fighting out there, let me tell you, uh, that is not the ways, that is not of God. Mm -hmm. No, 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 you are living in sin. The other thing is that uh, let's be mindful of our children, especially the parents who have small kids. I wish I can go back there. I wish I can go back there. I could have done differently of what I did at that time. I thought that loving your children is uh, being there for them. It is, that is not just enough. That is not just enough. You need to dig deeper. You need to learn their language. You need to learn, um, like now if I was sensitive enough, and I say, sometimes I say, okay, I did a mistake, but it's good that people will learn from me. Today my children are healed. And I, I, they always tell me, my mom, even us one time, we'll get out there and share our story Definitely. and encourage people. Definitely. But right now they are not ready for that. Mm -hmm. So um, let's learn their language. And if a marriage can't work, don't force it. I've come to realize you can never change a human being. It's only God who can change a human being. I tried every day. I was hopeful that tomorrow when I wake up, my husband will be a different person. He never changed until his, his death. He never changed completely. Even at his deathbed, he was still like, I remember one time I asked him before he died. I told him, I used to call him daddy. I don't know why, but that's what he used. Because you missed that love of I dad. think it's because I, I missed that love. Mm -hmm. And I told him, uh, we need uh, even to apologize to our children. You remember how he used to beat, especially the son? Mm -hmm. And he told me, but you see, apparently you can't, lazima uchape watoto. Lazima ufanya nini. So I was like, I um to bad wako soon. You cannot change them. Even at his deathbed, he's not remorseful. So it's good to just quit. You can't die to live alone. Mm -hmm. Today I'm a very happy and proud single mother. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I believe everyone has uh, who will be watching uh, will have to pick something from Jane's story. It's one of the most sensitive stories that probably most of we family members are experiencing and we are not, uh, we've not been bold enough to speak it out. But through her story, I'm sure it will touch someone. Till next time, stay tuned.